Welcome back. Uh, we're actually going to get to that testing now. I uh, had a lot of fun talking with you about the methodology of this. Um, so we're going to do a testing on patient eight for the PTT testing. And uh, we'll also do this patient too. And we'll see the difference uh, between the two of them. Patient eight uh, seems like it's actually clotted already. Oh, you can't see anything. Uh, patient eight seems like it's actually clotted already. Um, so we'll see the difference in results. Uh, you would never ever, uh, I want to clarify this, you would never ever put a clotted specimen intentionally on your analyzer because uh, you could ruin the analyzer. You, you'll end up putting a clot in that, um, that specimen probe and you're gonna be in for a rough day <laughs> if you do that. So if you want to enjoy a great day at work, don't do that. <laughs> And also, you know, you'll affect the patient's results, and that's absolutely unacceptable. Okay, so um, we're doing, we're just going to do PTT, um, so you'll get the feel of how all this works. Okay, so with PTT, we have um, two specimens here, 15 and 8. 15 does not look like it's clotted. Um, to clear, actually, I think that's, this could be just because um, it's been frozen for a long time. These, these are actually pretty old. So um, that is obviously going to affect what we're doing here. Um, but I want you to see the, the difference between the two. So we'll see how 15 goes. Um, the reason that they're frozen is because we get these from uh, one of our clinical affiliates. They're very, very kind enough to support us in this program. And um, they, they took off of the blue, um, the blue top. They took the plasma off so we would have something to use in class. And uh, it's frozen so that we don't lose the labile factor. Um, and I want you to look that up, which one's the labile factor. Um, we don't want to lose the labile factor so that we have accurate testing in class. Okay, so let's, let's get started. So first we're going to put the patient specimen in there. Again, this is 100 microliters. Whoops, 100 microliters, so you can see that. All right, that's on my pipette. I'm pressing down on the thumb part and I'm putting it down into the bottom. And ooh, let's see this. Okay, and I'm, can you see it? Oh my goodness, come on camera. I'm depressing in order to pull it up, okay? So I have 100 microliters in there, and this is patient eight. We don't wanna put it in the wrong one. So I put it in there, and then I'm going to get rid of it by pressing this to eject the, the tip, okay? Now I'm going to do patient 15. Put another tip on there, a new tip. You never use the same one, okay? Press down, open this up. Put it down in there. Okay. So you never wanna pull out while you're depressing your pipette, okay? Because if you do, you'll get bubbles in there and that won't work out for you, okay? You'll have inaccurate results because it won't be the right amount of specimen. So let's put 15 in there. I'm pressing down on the button. Okay, now I'm gonna get rid of it in the biohazardous bag. Okay, and now we're going to um, add the PTT reagent, not the calcium chloride, okay? That's preheating. We're gonna swirl the PTT reagent. We're gonna open it up. All right, there's no rubber plug in there, so that's nice. Um, put a new tip on there. And since I'm doing reagent in both of them, I can use the same tip as long as I don't put the tip in uh, the cuvette itself, okay? So I don't need to replace my tip here because I didn't touch any of the patient specimen that's in there. All right, get rid of that. 
Okay, so let's mix them really quickly. Okay, having that in there is not gonna do anything bad. Okay, so you don't need to worry too much about the time um, that they're in there. You want about a five to six minute um, incubation time, although that's not what our analyzer is set to, but I know that it takes time to add that in there. So by the time that you're ready to actually start the test, it's gonna have been like five minutes. <laughs> because I'm being realistic here. So, okay, so we're, we want to do PTT testing. So I'm gonna press this power looking button. All right, and it's going to start that incubation time of the reagent being in there with um, the specimen. So what's gonna end up happening is once it gets further down uh, to zero, it's gonna beep at you, okay? And don't let that startle you. Don't let it get you upset. It's just trying to let you know um, that the next, the next things that you do will possibly affect the accuracy of your patient in regard to how long it's been incubating. Okay. And again, like I said, you know, it's already been reached. The five to six minutes will have already been reached when you're ready. Okay, so we're getting down to that point. So when we get to zero, within four seconds of it hitting zero, you're going to need to hit this clock, sorry, clock facing uh, button right here. Okay, let it hit zero. Zero. Okay, we hit it. Now we can move this here. All right, I can take my calcium chloride out here. All right, same amount, it's 100 microliters. Just because it says that the incubation time is exceeded doesn't mean that anything's wrong, okay? Again, it's just looking out for you doing appropriate testing, okay? And the time frame as well, because we're worried about the incubation time. All right, so when when we hit that, or when we hit this uh, incubation time exceeded um, window, that's okay. The next thing that you would do, the next thing you would do is hit that power looking button thing and that's gonna start the clock um, once you hit this. So I'm sorry, I did that so quickly and I kind of said the wrong thing. Um, <laughs> let's watch this really quick. Okay, so see, see the ball is still moving because it's in the same spot where that magnet is, the magnet inside the analyzer. When the viscosity changes and it clots in the cuvette, that ball is going to start to look like it's moving, um, but it's not actually moving. It's going to be still because of the viscosity. Okay, so the incubator, or sorry, the... The time is still running. Okay, we're doing PTT. So know that the PTT critical result is 100 seconds. This should actually give us like a 70 something. All right, so I know that I did that last part fast. So with when it says the time is exceeded, you want to hit that clock face. Oh, there we go. We got to 62.2. So it's not really staying completely. See, it's moving around, but the analyzer says that it's already stuck. So there we go. Isn't that fun? It's kind of like a little ride. <laughs> All right. So I know that I did that really fast. Um, and I said the wrong thing when I did it, uh, but I just wanted you to see the ball and everything. So um, after we say, after it says that the time has been exceeded, you press the, um, the, the clock face. Okay, and that's going to let you add the reagent. So you saw I added the calcium chloride and then I hit the hand. That is the start button. So as soon as I hit, as soon as I put the calcium chloride in there, chemically inside the cuvette, the, um, the plasma is already starting to want to clot because the calcium has now been reintroduced into the plasma, okay? And the environment is correct and right in order for a clot to happen. So it's ideal at that point. And so as soon as we add calcium chloride, we want to start the clock and that's what the hand is for, okay? So we did that really fast. Now, if this was PT, um, 
we don't use the calcium chloride in that one because uh, PT already has calcium in it. Uh, it already has the calcium in it. So uh, if you see here, this is, it says it already has calcium chloride in it. So in that case, um, when you hit that clock face and you're gonna add your reagent at that, in that test, it would be the PT reagent. Okay, so let's do another uh, PTT, the one on the other patient. So um, this is not critical, but this is high. So either the patient was starting to, the specimen was starting to clot when you put it on the analyzer, or this patient is on uh, therapy um, that is, you know, causing them to not, um, to not clot. So since it's PTT, it might be heparin. A more accurate heparin analysis would be anti-10A, but we don't have that here. And that one is affected by uh, hemolysis because of the amount of uh, hemoglobin present in uh, the test. That is a very, very sensitive test. It's really awesome, um, but we don't have it here, unfortunately, so I can't really talk to you about it. Um, but anyway, okay, so let's move on to the next PTT. So in order to get back to the testing menu, you press the clock. All right, we're doing PTT again. So let's do that. We've already got the incubation time. Okay, I'm going to get my uh, calcium chloride ready because I already, you know, you saw that I had already put the reagent in there. All right, when it starts beeping at me and gets to the zero immediately, I'm going to uh, press the power looking button. So we'll try that again. All right, so we're at 30. I'll come back when it gets closer. Okay, it already started beeping at me. So the important part is when we get to zero, we press, sorry, not the clock face, the power button thing. Okay, so we're putting it into the measurement well. Oh, uh, I forgot to press this part. Okay, so that's okay. We just press this again. We add the calcium chloride and we press the hand, okay? Man, we are getting good at that now, huh? <laughs> All right, so even when it screams at you, it's still okay. So here, we'll see this again. Oh, I guess if you're online, you're looking at it this way. Sorry about that. So let's see, I'm hoping that this one's gonna be less than the other one. Again, 100 seconds for PTT is called is considered critical. Oh man. <laughs> well, they're both gonna be high then. Your normal is going to be around in uh, around 20. These are obviously not normal. Again, they're old, so the accuracy is not going to be really great. Um, and we're expecting it to be high like this. Oh, maybe we're going to get a critical. Let's see. Looks that way. Okay, so this is definitely a critical. You can basically stop at this point. Um, so since it's over 100 and it's still going, we would report as greater than 100 and it would be a critical. We would call up. Oh, it finished. We would call and report it to the um, patient's nurse make sure that it really is the patient's nurse and not just somebody that says, yeah, I'll take it. 
Um, it can be any nurse, um, but it has to be a nurse or the patient's, uh, so the best thing is the patient's nurse or the patient's doctor. And um, if they're not able to be found, you can uh, leave it with the charge nurse. Okay, so um, that's it for this. And we'll see if we'll do a PT on here. And uh, if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the channel. Um, thank you so much for your support if you already have subscribed. And I hope to be seeing you again in the next video. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Bye.